like them. You can use spironolactone. It is shown to have improvement and it's shown to be a solution for androgen alopecia by blocking the androgens from reaching. So, spironolactone, also sold under the brand name Aldactone, among many others, is used to treat water retention due to usually heart, liver or kidney failure. But it also has a completely different purpose that we are going to look at today. Before we start the video guys, I gotta make this announcement. This is purely entertainment. It is not educational. I'm not a doctor. I'm not your doctor. You should see a physician by any kind of medical advice you want. You should see a professional. You shouldn't ask me. You shouldn't do what I do. So how does spiral electron work? Spironolactone works by inhibiting the action of a hormone in the body called aldosterone. This hormone is produced by the glands found above the, found above the kidneys called the adrenal glands. Aldosterone acts in the kidneys where it is involved in controlling the balance of salt and water in the body. Blocking the action of aldosterone causes the kidneys to increase the amount of salt such as sodium that they fill out in the blood and into the urine. When these salts are filtered out of the blood by the kidneys, water is also drawn alongside. Spironolactone therefore increases the amount of water that is drawn out of the blood and into the urine. This helps exceed fluids to be removed from the body. So at this point, you might wonder, what does this have to do with hair loss? And I can tell you it has completely nothing to do with hair loss and it doesn't work for hair loss in any way. This is when you use it systemically as a pill or ingest it in any way where it goes through the whole body. One interesting thing they found out was that about 10% of men using spironolactone for heart, kidney or liver failure diseases also had a tendency to produce gynecomastia. Now gynos are usually produced when you have too much estrogen, but you can also get gynecomastia when you have a low androgen level. So of course this means that spironolactone has some pretty strong anti-androgenic capabilities and it is later found out that it works as an androgen antagonist. An antagonist works by inhibiting the action of the receptor by blocking it completely Therefore, it doesn't work. This is the same way that IU58841 works, also the same way that CB0301 works. These are all androgen antagonists. So currently we see a lot of hype on the forum Reddit, and this is due to the newly found studies on spironolactone and how it works by inhibiting the androgen effect. Now people have a tendency to think that the most recent and newest compound on the market is usually the best. Now usually this works with computers, cars and whatnot, but this isn't the case with medicine. And it is still in my opinion that IU58841 is the strongest and best androgen antagonist on the market. But of course this doesn't mean that spironolactone doesn't have its place and purpose in your anti-hair loss regimen. Now one thing I found pretty interesting with spironolactone is that it has already been approved by the FDA, although not for hair loss, but for all the other diseases that I mentioned before. But this also means that if you use it for hair loss, you are using a compound that has been tested enough and we know there's no crazy adverse side effects that hasn't been mentioned or something hidden that we don't know about yet. And you, and you can't just FDA approve something for systemical use that isn't going to work locally. And of course, if you're going to use something locally that is already approved systemically, you are going to have a reduced risk of all of those side effects that is systemical by using it locally. Now, when using it locally, topically, whatever you call it, it is worth mentioning that spironolactone has a Dalton at 416. This means that it is able to penetrate the skin. 
A rule of thumb is normally anything about a dalson of 500 isn't able to penetrate the skin. That is also one of the main concerns when using finasteride and dutasteride because it's way higher in the dalson scale. But spot spironolactone is way lower and able to penetrate the skin, making it a candidate for using it topically. So once again, if this has any interest to you guys, I have linked some studies down below that I use to gather this information. Unfortunately, a lot of these studies also on men is behind a payment wall and I'm not going to share or show them on here because it could get the channel in trouble and I don't want to miscredit anyone who has worked hard to do these studies. So if you want to read them, I suggest that you go and pay for them or you can just read them on Reddit or wherever you can find it. I'm not going to provide those links because it is illegal and I don't condone any illegal actions on this channel, of course. But I found one study that included men and women where they actually used spironolactone to treat androgen alopecia. And I am able to at least give the main takeaways from the study that I have here. So they split the groups into three groups but combined men and women for this study. And what they were given was a topical minoxidil only gel at 5%. They also gave them a topical spironolactone gel at 1% only. And of course, then there was the treatment with the combination of minoxidil and spironolactone gel in a combinated group. Now there were 39 men and 21 women in the study. And in all those groups, the patient applied the, the gel twice daily. And after 12 months, the results were that the minoxidil group, only 19% had some improvement. Now in the spironolactum group, only 80% had some improvements from this. But in the minoxidil and spironolactum group, 100% showed improvement. Subjects with at least some growth were classified as improved, which is a bit concerning. To further assess the improvement, the researchers broke them down into several other groups. And these groups range from poor, fair, good, excellent and complete improvement. Now they don't specify what this, the criteria for these groups are. Also one of my concerns with the study. And once again, subjects were not broken up into groups of men and female, they were just combined. So we don't know specifically if the men had worse improvement or better improvement from this compared to the female. And once again, this can lead to some kind of confusion about the study. So personally, what I would recommend with spironolactone is that you at least try to use something like IU58841 and CB0301 before you try this solution. It has its place and purpose. And of course, if you tend to react bad to one of the other of the two or both of them, or you just don't like them, you can use spironolactone. It is shown to have improvement and it's shown to be a solution for androgen alopecia by blocking the androgens from reaching your receptors in the scalp. Now guys, if you have used spironolactone, I would love to hear your comments down below in the comment section. Share with the others if it works and if there were anything you would like to share that I didn't go over in this video so that any of the other guys with problems can benefit from your experience. With that said, until next time, cheers.